Let's talk about some particles. We have just finished uploading the entire material course. If you haven't seen that one yet, I do recommend you go check that out first, because if you're going to be making particle systems, uh, particles interact with particle materials. And for that, you're going to need to have at least a basic understanding of how to set up your materials. Uh, we're going to go over the particle specific stuff in this series, so don't worry about that. But you probably should understand a little bit about like material math and UV math and that kind of thing. But without further ado, let's get into it. We're going to go ahead and make ourselves some particles. So here under effects, we have the Niagara emitter and the Niagara system. And then we've got some advanced stuff that we're not going to worry about. This is a introductory series. And what is the difference between these two, right? When do I make a system and when do I make an emitter? Well, that's actually uh, quite easy. Niagara systems are the thing that you physically place in the world. And Niagara emitters are parts of those systems. So if we make a Niagara system here, we can choose between a whole bunch of pre-existing emitters. Uh, a lot of this comes with the learning content. So a lot of this actually shows you how particle systems work. So if I don't cover something very well, you can go in and uh, check out these learning materials uh, as well. And if I, for instance, do this kill particles, and I open up this system, uh, you will see that it has this entire system uh, with a couple of notes uh, explaining how things work. So that is quite nice, uh, because I am unlikely to cover literally everything that you could ever possibly know about particles. So that's a good secondary source of information. Now that we have this one open here anyway, actually, uh, let's talk about emitters because this thing over here is an emitter and what does that actually mean well a system can have multiple emitters so we chose the kill particles emitter when we set up this system uh, but we can add another one if we want to so we can say i also want the infinite particle lifetime which is just going to be one particle that infinitely exists more or less and that will then coexist inside of this system with the kill particle uh, and the kill particles just bugged out a little bit there so both of these emitters together uh the kill particles are acting up a little bit weirdly will make this system and that is the basic rundown of how this works is you add multiple of these emitters together to make a system and then you put the system into the world as a matter of fact if we make our own emitter which let's just do that uh real quick you can go into effects and just make an agro emitter and then you can choose one of these emitters to just kind of copy everything off of and then change things to your liking so quite often i will end up using the uh, it's not in the learning content it's in the template uh, the fountain for instance is a very common one uh, that i will end up using or the omnidirectional burst uh, let's do the omnidirectional burst right so this will be burst fx1 something like that and when we open it up, it will have the default uh, omnidirectional burst, which if we uh, can get our camera close to it at some point, like right here, there we go. You can see it is a burst of particles that goes in to all directions and has gravity. And you can see there's a bunch of stuff going on here. We'll talk all about that when we get to it. But for now, uh, just know that we now have our own uh, particle emitter. We can't put this emitter into the world. This is an emitter. This emitter can only go into a system, and then that system can go into the world. So let's open up our particle system again, and we can add another emitter. And the emitter that we just made, Burst Effects 1, is now one of the emitters that we can add. And the wonderful thing is, uh, we can change things in here now, in our emitter, and it will immediately get updated in here as well. So if you have the same emitter in like 10 different particle systems, you have one place to just change it and everything is linked up together. But, and here we get into some really interesting stuff, you can still overwrite things and add things to emitters in specific particle systems. So we have this burst effects one, right? And it does a bunch of stuff. But what if in this specific system, we wanted to uh, not have gravity? We can just disable the gravity in this system the actual emitter itself, in all the other systems that it exists in, still has the gravity. It's just in this one, it doesn't matter. So let's put this into the world, and it will like do a 
burst there and it has the one singular particle that keeps spawning over and over and over again and the kill particles still are being a little bit weird so that is the relationship between systems and emitters but then what is an emitter how does an emitter build up because a system is built up out of different emitters and an emitter here is built out of these singular modules every single one of these things is called a module you can see as i go through them here they all have their own settings and their own stuff going on uh which you can make your own custom modules as well if you want to that's a little bit more advanced we're probably going to be talking about that in this series for the most part with all the modules that pre-exist like there is a lot of them like these are all categories by the way these are not just modules like these are a lot of these have multiple different things inside of them we're not going to cover all of these because learning all of these one by one uh, out of any sort of context wouldn't be a productive use of my time in making these videos it wouldn't be a productive use of your time in learning niagara suffice to say we're going to make one more emitter here and we'll make that out of an empty emitter there's also a template that is called something like completely empty i don't like using that one i if i just start from scratch i use empty again often i'll just piggyback off of the fountain or the omnidirectional burst sometimes the hanging particles or directional burst uh, those are the common ones that I use. Dynamic beam. We'll talk a little bit about beams and ribbons as well in the future. For now, let's just go with a empty particle system, though. So let's call this uh, MT1. And this is all that we will have um, when we make an empty particle uh, emitter. So what do we have here, right? We've got emitter spawn. Everything that you put in here, all the modules, and each module you can see kind of as like a function right as a little bit of code that runs so emitter spawn only runs once when the emitter is initially spawned so if you need to set any values uh, generate any like random values or whatever uh, that stay consistent throughout the entire lifetime of the emitter uh, that is where you do it then the emitter has its own update loop which is effectively just a tick event that will uh, allow you to most of the time just spawn in the particles you also have this emitter state um function or module rather already pre-built there for you uh, but for the most part you're just going to be putting particle spawners in here then just like the emitter has a spawn and an update each individual particle also has their update and their spawn so this will only run once for the emitter effectively begin play right for the emitter when the emitter is spawned in this will run once particle spawn will run once for every particle that spawns in so if we're spawning in like uh 10 particles every single one of those is going to have its own particle spawn so if you set a random value in emitter spawn it's always going to be consistently the same until you spawn in another system which will have another random value. For particle spawn, every particle that's going to spawn, if you set a random value in here, is going to have its own random value. Particle update is uh, just, again, more or less the event tick of your particle so if your particle needs to change color over its lifetime or it needs to uh, change color based on its speed or it needs to change its shape based on whatever it needs to do something with the material based on again literally anything that you can imagine uh, that will all be going on in particle updates uh, as well as things like applying forces so moving your particle around for the most part will be done in particle updates all this just calculates stuff for a point. Nothing is being rendered yet. And that is where we get into the renderer. And this I'm actually going to show you uh, right away. Because the renderer does really only a couple of options. We've got a decal renderer, like a light renderer, a volume renderer, all that kind of stuff. For the most part, there's only three renderers that you often will use. For the most part, like by far the most common, will probably be the sprite renderer. It is a default renderer. This will render by default a sprite with a material. So that's just a little square with a material on it. And the default sprite material has something set up in it. Uh, 
a little bit of all this going on. We'll talk more about like this particle color uh, node, for instance, uh, a little bit later. And effectively what this does is it just creates a, uh, it's a sphere mask, but you can see it's on a 2D plane. So it just creates a circle. So your default particle is just going to be a circle that you can set some information on. If for whatever reason you uh, clear out this material and you want to uh, get our like default prime material back, you might not see it immediately. And if that happens, you want to click on the options here and you want to uh, show plugin content and maybe also show engine content. Yeah, you also need to have show engine content enabled and then you'll be able to see our default uh, sprite material. So we can uh, put that back now and we have our default sprite material again. But we can also, instead of uh, rendering a sprite, what we can do is the most often used is the ribbon renderer uh, as well as the mesh renderer. And the mesh renderer, uh, you can obviously just render pretty much any 3D static mesh that you want as a particle, which is quite nice. We are not spawning in any particles at the moment yet though, uh, and that is because this is just a brief overview of like the structure of how these systems are going to work. I think just having this as its own part to compartmentalize how this works is a good thing before we move forward with actually spawning in particles. So next time we're going to be filling in this empty emitter we're going to put it into a system and we're going to have a particle spawn in and maybe it'll do some stuff. And for the full course, if you're watching this in the future, it should be all up on the YouTube channel already. But if you're watching this shortly after it was uploaded, there will be a link down below in the description to the Patreon where you can find the full course. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. A huge thank you to my Cave Student tier supporters, Earl Monteville Erno, and my Cave Digger tier supporters, Sergey Thomas, 